my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. The mother and brothers of Jesus arrived and standing outside sent in a message asking for him. A crowd was sitting round him at the time. The message was passed to him. Your mother and brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. He replied, Who are my mother and bro my brothers? And looking around at those sitting in a circle about him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of God, that person is my brother and sister and mother. Lord Jesus, we know and we've heard many times that in no way are you slighting or disrespecting or putting aside, setting aside your mother by this comment in this passage in the gospel. In fact, the opposite, you're, you're highlighting the fact that she is truly a part of your family. She is truly your mother in, in even the spiritual sense that you speak about here. Not only did she bear you in her body, but she follows the will of your father. She does the will of God. So if that's not what you're saying, Lord Jesus, then what are you saying here? What are you teaching us? What are you teaching me today? Well, I suppose the message is simple enough that your family, your true family, is more than just blood relations. We also know, Lord Jesus, as we've heard many times, that the brothers and sisters mentioned in this gospel are not, of course, your immediate brothers and sisters. You were the only son of Our Lady. But your brothers in the broadest sense, your cousins, your kinsmen. But you're teaching us and them and your disciples in this moment that your family, your true family, is more than just your blood relations. And that you are inviting us into this family. You know, this um, past Christmas, I had the great, uh, the great blessing, the unusual blessing of being able to be home for Christmas. A priest doesn't always have that opportunity. Christmas Day is usually a very busy day. Uh, but it so happened that this year I could, be, I could be with my family. Which was, of course, very, very special and wonderful to be part of all the activities and the festivities and the celebrations, um, all the old family traditions and customs and ongoing jokes, etc., etc. And this year, in fact, we had with us my cousin's fiancé. They'll be married later this year, and so he was with us for Christmas. And one feels a little bit sorry for someone in, that, uh, in a circumstance like that. Um, it's, always, it's always unfamiliar uh, the, the new family customs and traditions and, and how things work, it always takes a while getting, getting used to. But uh, he, did, he did very, very well in um, getting involved and uh, making the most of the time and really being part of the family. And uh, the family also, for their part, thanks be to God, did well to welcome, in, welcome him in and, and make him feel at home. And this is, of course, how culture and community grows as families become part of other families. As families grow, that is how they, they continue down the generations, how those traditions continue. And there's something deeply human and deeply beautiful about being part of a family and, of course, being welcomed into a new family. And this, in fact, Lord Jesus, is exactly what you're offering to us today in this gospel what you're saying about us who choose to follow you. That we are part of your family. That your brothers and sisters and mother are those who do your will, who sit at your feet and listen to your word and follow you. In fact, the, the scriptures refer to 
the church, those who follow you, your disciples, as the family of God. And this is, in fact, not just like a human family or analogous to a human family. It is far deeper and indeed more important than any human family. The family of God, that is the church. Because, in fact, when we do follow you, Lord, when we follow your commandments, when we believe in you and are baptized, we become, in reality, like you and with you, sons of God. We share in your sonship, and God, your Father, becomes our Father. And you, we, we truly share in your life. We have your life within us, and not just for this life, but for eternity. We are truly part of the divine family, the family of God. What an incredible and beautiful mystery that you, Lord, invite us into your family. That is, each as individuals in our baptism, and then as part of the communion of those baptized, which is the church. You know, we speak about sometimes in the church, our brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes preachers or um, speakers in the church will use this phrase, my brothers and sisters. Now, that might sometimes just seem like rhetoric, but it is deeply and profoundly true. It is indeed more true than even our human families. That someone else that is baptized into the family of God is with me, a brother or a sister in Christ, that we are both part of his family, that I can call that person brother or sister, and am called to love them as such because we share the same father. And we can live as sons and daughters of the father and as brothers and sisters in Christ because we have his life within us, because we share the love of the Son that is the Holy Spirit. And by being part of this divine family, of sharing in your family, Lord Jesus, we also have this incredible gift of your mother, that she is, as you reminded us, as you gave us from the cross, truly our mother, the mother of the church and the mother of all Christians. And in fact, you say in this passage of the Gospel, That if we, who are gathered around you, do your will, follow your commands, are part of your family, we are your brothers and sisters and your mother. And I think that is because your mother, the one who bore you, brought you into the world, also by her faith and her following you, her following the will of the Father, continued and continues to bring you into the world, to bring you to us. And that when we follow her example in this, when we follow you, when we do the will of your Father, when we say, let it be done to me according to your word, when we nourish your life within us, so we carry you to others, so we can bring you to others, so we can bring the same message, the same invitation to others to become part of the family of God. And this indeed, Lord, is your plan and your desire for the whole world, that each and every person can have the joy that is their destiny, that is what they're made for, to be part of your family, to be brought into the life of God, to be called and to be really a son or a daughter of God, to have your life within them in this life and for eternity. And so we thank you for this great gift of the family of God that is the church and this great gift of sharing in your divine family of the Trinity and of having your mother as our mother. And we ask for her intercession, your intercession, blessed lady, to help us to bring your son to the world so that we can bring the world into his family. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask your help to put them into practice. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.